Hey YouTube, welcome back. We're going to do a very informal video talking about support builds. There have been other YouTube videos that have gone up about support, but importantly, we are recording this after the patch notes. So there's a couple small changes that you need to know about. You need to verbally listen to me and not only look at this. Because right off the bat, one of these things is no longer a recommendation for you, okay? So if you had asked me before the patch notes come out, I would say the best support builds, they don't really exist. Who cares about support? There are already builds and play styles and masteries in Last Epoch that have tons of support built into them. And I would have listed these three things. I would have listed Paladin because Volatile Reversal is absolutely insane and it buffs your entire party, or I guess debuffs the enemy. Sigils of Hope, because they give you armor, which is actually Endurance Threshold after the patch notes. But they also give a bunch of uh, percent increased damage, which is great for any kind of party. And then if you're a Paladin, you also get Holy Aura. And then Holy Aura gives you a bunch of generic damage increases, attack and cast speed, stuff like that. It gives cast speed now after the patch notes. Great. I would have told you uh, any Primalist. Let's do this one first. Any Primalist, because you get Summon Spriggan. Summon Spriggan gives you flat spell damage gives you crit avoidance. It's very, very strong to have this in any kind of build. Helps you hit that crit cap or maybe replace your offhand catalyst with something else instead. Primalist also gets things like War Cry, maybe a Frenzy Totem if you're going to play Beastmaster, which gives you Frenzy and like juiced up Frenzy to your whole party. Um, yeah, I think, eh, I think something else, right? War Cry, Summon Spriggan, that's, that's about it. And then for the third thing of like any build can be a support. I would have told you that a rogue, because rogues can apply crit vulnerability, crit vulnerability goes up to 100% chance to crit, and it basically caps crit for everybody in your party. This is one of two very important changes that we learned during the patch notes. Crit vulnerability no longer stacks up to 100% chance to crit. It, it no longer just free rolls all of your crit just because you're hitting the enemy. Crit vulnerability, instead of being 5% five chance, 5 chance to receive a crit, it's 2% chance to receive a crit. And instead of, you know, having, I think it had no cap before, right? It now has a cap of 10 stacks. So 10 times 2 is 20% chance to receive a crit. How this works is if your uh, tooltip chance to crit is 50% and you cap out your crit vulnerability at 20% increased chance to receive a crit, it's like having 70 crit chance. So it's good, but it's no longer absolutely insane for, uh, for adding crit to yourself and to your entire party. We've even gone so far as to say that if you're playing a rogue, maybe just don't play a crit build unless it's a shadow dagger build because then shadow dagger is automatically crit. This is a pretty impactful change from the patch notes here. Uh, Let's, as long as you're talking about patch note stuff, let's skip through all of this and I'm going to show you this thing down here, okay? So we're talking about like teamwork skills or nodes or skills from different classes. How do I spec differently if I'm in a party? We were like brainstorming how we might present this information. So big change number one from the patch note is the rogue. Big change number two is this. Dreadshade, we were speculating that it'd be a really good skill to use for a party because you can put the Dreadshade on an enemy, you can put the Dreadshade on one of your minions, and then all of a sudden you and all your party members can also benefit from that. Dreadshade no longer affects your party members. It's a pretty drastic change if you were planning to do this one specific thing here. Necromancers are not a support. This does not work the way that we thought it was going to work. It's still insane. Like, it's still very, very good. If you're going to play like a solo necromancer or something, go for it. Even if you're going to play a necromancer in a party play, go for that. Do that as well. Just know that Dreadshade is not a support skill. It's just benefiting you and your minions. So those are two big changes. But let's scroll back up to the top of this sheet and talk about the other things we're brainstorming when it comes to supports. I would be surprised if we see like a dedicated support build. I, I don't really think that's going to exist. The closest thing to a dedicated support skill that doesn't deal any damage at all is probably a paladin. You'd go like uh, holy, I guess I can just pull it up on screen here, can't I? You would go holy aura, sigils, volatile reversal. Um, what's the other skill? Maybe lunge to buff your allies. 
And then what's the other one I'm thinking of? I remember saying something? Javelin. Yeah, God bless. I was like, Javelins? Javelin's a damage over time skill. Okay. Javelin was the skill I was thinking of because Javelin, you have this note over here. It gives percent increased damage. It gives percent increased endurance threshold, not armor. That's one of the important changes there. But like, if you wanted to play a full-on support, a paladin is probably the closest thing to dealing as low damage and being as helpful as possible. But the thing is, when it comes to Last Epoch, I think the builds that are like supporting, you can just play a normal build and still deal damage and still be okay playing solo while also having tons of support opportunities, which is this section of the Word document down here. As a joke, we were talking about the worst support builds. This would be like, Builds that have the least synergy or give the least or gain the least from being in a uh, from being in a party This is kind of a joke, but it's funny to talk about lich gives almost nothing to allies Lich has a ton of damage. That's really cool We talked about you can use bone curse on an enemy and take all the bone curse more damage multipliers And then your enemies hit the enemy or you sorry your allies hit the enemy and proc the bone curse damage Yeah, this it's damage so Lich gives almost nothing to allies. Avalanche, if you're playing a shaman, is terrible because you're going to lag and you're playing a shaman. Next up is mage. Mage gives very, very little. Whether you're playing a Sork or a Spellblade, you don't really get anything here. You can crowd control the enemy. You can freeze them, maybe. You could CC the enemy, I guess, technically. There was one funny thing that we were talking about. If you have a bunch of people in your party who are all igniting the enemy, there's a node and an enchant weapon that consumes ignites and makes them all deal their damage instantly. Normally, this isn't great, but this node also has a 200% more damage multiplier on it. So it's kind of like tripling the damage of everybody in your party if everybody's playing ignite. And like, that's kind of cute, right? Maybe that's good. But yeah, these are probably the worst support builds right here. So moving on, this is the most important part of the document, other than the patch notes. This is, if I'm playing in a party, what's, what's this one small trick that I could do in order to make my build more useful? So for a Primalist, we have Warcry. You can give your team members percent increased cold damage or crit chance. We talked about Summon Spriggan. It's great. Frenzy Totem, if you're a Beastmaster, giving Frenzy and stuff. Entangling Roots, if you're a Druid, can give spell damage and flat damage. It's quite good. Mage is really a stretch. There's not much there. Just kill things faster and then hope that your party is happy about you doing that. Sentinel is excellent. There's a lot of good stuff going on here. Lunge gives haste and healing, technically, if you want to do that kind of thing. We talked about Anomaly, if you're playing a Void Knight. Anomaly, uh, if the... Where's the node for it? Let's go grab this. Um, anomaly causes... It's casting yourself, moves with you. Yeah, this one here, Lingering Memory on the bottom right. When allies or enemies exit Time Bubble, effects are uh, effects caused or granted by Time Bubble persist for two seconds. So maybe you can scale up the AoE of Anomaly. Uh, if you don't take this node, you're not really a support. But if, you, if you're playing in a party, I would say just spend one point over here, click on this, and then like if, an, if a team member walks through your Time Bubble, for the next two seconds, or as long as they're on you, they're going to get leech and attack speed and cooldown recovery speed, and you're going to feel good about having some kind of support for the rest of your team. So that's cool. Let's go on to Acolyte. We've already talked about Dreadshade. We talked about Bone Curse a little bit. Acolyte gives very, very little to your party. It gives damage. Eh, sure, but... And then moving on to Rogue. Remember, this is the patch note thing that we already talked about. Crit Vulnerability, S tier support build. Let's hit delete, that no longer exists. It gives 20% crit chance instead of capped crit chance. Wow, what a impactful change. The other things for Rogue that you can consider doing if you're playing at a party, use one small change. Lethal Mirage. I don't know if you want to do this, but it is cute and it's noteworthy and I think I should tell you about it. Uh, you can make Lethal Mirage deal no damage and only hit your allies. It gives a ton of flat dodge, and dodge is interesting. It's easier to pick up percent increased dodge rating than it is to get percent or than it is to get flat dodge rating. So giving this much flat dodge is kind of cool. 
I don't think you should do this, but it's cool and I should definitely mention it a lot. But the other most impactful thing that you can do if you're a rogue is just decoy. Whether you're specking decoy or just having it on your bars, you can toss it out. Drawing aggro, even if just for one second or maybe even half a second, away from your party onto the decoy, getting those monsters to focus on something else with the taunt, it's really, really good. So that's that's the kind of stuff that you can do with support. I, I would kind of be surprised if we see four-man parties where one person is only a support and doesn't deal any damage at all. I think that's more of a Path of Exile thing. I'd just be kind of surprised if it happens in the last epoch as well. But uh, that said, this is a pretty informal YouTube video. If you have ideas about support or if you're planning on doing things or maybe even currently doing things with support or like, you know, being in a party and this kind of teamwork synergies, if you're doing stuff that we haven't talked about here, let me know because I'm curious and we only learn stuff if we talk to each other. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.